Welcome to the report for Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about the Ukraine and how support for the Ukraine does nothing but prolong the war and prolong the suffering of the Ukrainian people. Stick around and listen. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, yes, we're going to talk about Ukraine today. Um, look, you know, obviously one thing we've noticed, uh, as COVID began to fade, the globalists decided to start World War III. Um, uh, uh, that lovely Jewish boy, Zelensky, over in uh, Ukraine, decided to start off World War III and had raised Mel Gibson's eyebrow yet again. And, um, you know, it was uh, very amusing. Well, not really amusing, actually. It's been a complete disaster because, um, obviously, Ukrainians are good Europeans and so are Russians. And, you know, it's another brother's war, ladies and gentlemen, much like... Um, um, you know, we saw in World War One and World War Two that decimated Europe. So we're seeing another horrible war in Europe, I guess. You know, how do you define Europe? Is Russia part of Europe? I guess it's at the edge of Europe. Russia is kind of Russia, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? And if Biden thinks, uh, you know, he's, um, you know, he's going to destroy Russia, um, you know, I think he should probably talk to, um, you know, Genghis Khan, maybe, or um, uh, Napoleon, or even Hitler, mate, because he's not going to, they'll all kind of laugh. It's like, good luck. Good luck with that one, because uh, I don't think anyone's managed to do that yet, um, to uh, basically occupy and defeat Russia. So this globalist war against Russia, I think, is bound to fail, but in the meantime, the Ukrainian um, people are just going to suffer and uh, um, you know I grew up with someone who was a Ukrainian who had Ukrainian um, uh, father and um, you know I've, I'm aware of the plight of the Ukrainian people they suffered terribly under the, uh, the Bolsheviks um, you know, during the Homolodor, which was an event that killed uh, between 6 and 12 million Ukrainians uh, more people than the Holocaust probably twice as many and of course you've never heard of it because uh, Ukrainians don't own media and they don't own Hollywood and they don't own, um, you know, a hundred uh, news stations in America. So that's why you've never heard of the Homolodor. Check it out online, no, but it's a terrible event that happened in the Ukraine and it was a communist atrocity that killed approximately 12 million people. Um, it, it was involved a kind of uh, forced starvation. So obviously there's been a lot of suffering that's gone on in the Ukraine and uh, if you see any of the footage that comes out of Ukraine, it, we're getting more of the same and, um, you know, I'm a fan of um, a Russian philosopher who's close to Putin, Alexander Dugin, and I've got a couple of books of his over there that I'm reading at the moment. Um, uh, one called The Multipolar World and another one, um, The Fourth Political Theory, where he, you know, he kind of expounds his beliefs. And, um, you know, uh, it's a fascinating subject. Uh, that he believes in a multipolar world that there's kind of areas of the world that have a sphere of influence. And if you think about it, it's quite true. Obviously, for example, America has a sphere of influence in Canada and Mexico because they border the country, right? You know, like, and, you know, like America has to have a sort of um, some level of um, good relationship with Canada and some level of good relationship with Mexico, right? To, uh, you know, maintain its stability. Well, it's a very similar situation with uh, Russia and the Ukraine. Uh, it's right on Russia's border. It's like the gateway to Russia. So there needs to be a good relationship between Ukraine and, um, and Russia. And there was one when there was a kind of Russian friendly leader until the globalist... Um, a revolution there in uh, I think it was 2014 and then obviously then the neo-nazis in Ukraine began to attack uh, ethnic Russians in the east in the Donbass and other areas and you know this current nightmare was born you can look up the uh, the history of all this and there's a fascinating documentary by Oliver Stone on all this but you know I really think that the best result um, is to for, for Ukraine to surrender to get rid of this um, bloodthirsty vampire uh, Zelensky and to put somebody who's Russian friendly. Um, you know, the, the Ukrainian people should elect somebody who is Russian friendly and then the problem will go away within a week. But Western powers are pumping money and aid, like, you know, your Biden and Pelosi, Pelosi visited, you know, and they're sending $40 billion over there. And this is why someone like um, Hunter Biden was there. He was like a... Um, a bag man. He would take take the money that comes in, it, which is the funding, and then he would kick do kickbacks. A hundred million dollars to Uncle Joe, the, you know, a hundred million dollars to, uh, to Schumer, a hundred million dollars to Pelosi. This is why she's rubbing her hands so, so delightedly, because you know the American government is completely corrupt for these wars, and um, you know we've seen this before in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Libya, in Syria. It's just on and on and on these warmongers. Under Trump, we had a break from these kind of wars. But they're back under the globalists and they'll continue and uh, all, 
all that's happening is, is that the elites are continuing to enrich themselves of war and this horrible situation where poor Ukrainians are being um, massacred for no reason. So supporting the Ukraine in this war effort I think is stupid and um, the sooner um, a peace is worked out between a Russian friendly government um, in, uh, in Ukraine and Putin, the sooner this all ends and goes away and they've got to get rid of that guy Zelensky because he's clearly been sent there to foment this war which is exactly what he's been doing ladies and gentlemen and that's the report for Tiger Mountain on the Ukraine situation.